welcome back to another episode of the emergency nurse crash course so today we are going to be going over cardiac emergencies so i'm going to talk about all things cardiac in this video so let's get into it so when people come in the er a common complaint we get is chest pain now chest pain is a little bit tricky because it can be one of four things chest pain can either be cardiac it can be pulmonary it can be gastrointestinal or it could be musculoskeletal so when somebody comes comes in we have no idea what this pain could be related to so we automatically start off with an EKG so that rules out anything serious let me rephrase that that rules out a STEMI which is a ST elevation myocardial infarction aka heart attack so you can either have a STEMI ST elevation MI or a NSTEMI a STEMI means that there's actually injury to the heart muscle and an end STEMI means that there's such ischemia. STEMIs are definitely more serious than end STEMIs because your cardiac muscle is actively dying. STEMIs occur most frequently in the AM, early AM and at rest. The chest pain usually lasts more than 30 minutes and it's unrelieved by rest or nitrates. So when someone comes in with a STEMI, our goal is to one, reduce their pain because that is extremely painful, and two, to restore perfusion back to the heart muscles. So how we do that is by one, getting them into the back quickly. So that's why we do the EKG, and then if we see anything on there, they're immediately sent to the back. Once I get there, what we're going to do is give them oxygen, nitrates, morphine, aspirin. We're going to make sure they're resting. We're going to do another stat EKG to see if there's been any changes. We're going to reduce their anxiety. We're going to elevate the head of the bed at least 30 degrees. And we're going to prepare them for cath lab because if this person is having a STEMI, we need to get them upstairs as soon as possible. And usually like the standard time from door to cath lab time is like 90 minutes. And we like to do it even quicker than that. So that's why we need to go through this process as quick as possible to get these people upstairs, to get that clot or whatever it is removed and restore perfusion back to the heart. Another cardiac emergency is heart failure. Heart failure can either be systolic or diastolic. If it's systolic, that means it's a pump problem. And if it's diastolic heart failure, that means there's a problem with the heart filling. So some signs and symptoms of left-sided heart failure are increased heart rate, trouble breathing on exertion, crackles, coughs, and their lung sounds, fatigue, weakness, and confusion. Some of the right-sided heart failure signs and symptoms are JVD, which is jugular vein distension. That's if you lay them flat and you see this vein kind of bulge out right here. Edema, weight gain, ascites, which is the fluid buildup in the stomach, and loss of appetite. Some interventions that we're gonna do for heart failure are suction if needed, elevate the head of the bed to high fowlers. Morphine does three different, Morphine does three different things. Morphine reduces anxiety, morphine vasodilates, and morphine reduces preload. So that is why that's one of the best drugs to give them. I'm going to give them positive inotropic agents to help that pump, pump that extra fluid out of their system. Lastly, we're going to prepare for NIPPV or intubation. NIPPV, I think... NIPPV, I think that's how I was supposed to say it. I think that's right. Anyways, it's basically like some type of like CPAP, BiPAP looking thing and it basically just gives a uh, positive pressure to keep the lungs open and keep air flowing properly. So the next cardiac emergency is hypertensive crisis. A hypertensive crisis is generally a systolic over 180 or a diastolic over 120. This is usually a cause of untreated hypertension. And signs and symptoms you're going to see with this are the patient may be completely asymptomatic. Sometimes the patient comes in for something totally unrelated and then we take their blood pressure and it's like 220 over like 150 and we're like girl are you okay anyways they can be dizzy have a headache chest pain they might have some visual changes and they might have some signs of heart failure so the goal of therapy is to decrease the blood pressure by 30 to 40 percent so if they came in at 250 systolic we'd want to get it down to 175 you don't want to drop their blood pressure like super quickly because they could have been living at this extremely high blood pressure for like years and if you drop their blood pressure you're going to send their body into shock so you need to slowly decrease it some drugs we might give them are anywhere from nitro labetalol and aprazoline and of course whenever you give like especially something like aprazoline you want to make sure this patient is on the cardiac monitor with me anytime my patient comes in with anything cardiac related if they have high blood pressure even if they have like a history of cardiac problems 
they are automatically going on a cardiac monitor. I need to see what their heart is doing at all times because, you know, people die on you and you want to make sure you're keeping a close eye on them. The next and final cardiac emergency that I'm going to talk about is aortic aneurysm. Basically what an aortic aneurysm is, it's a dilation and weakening of a part of your aorta. It basically looks like a little bulging sac coming off of the aorta. And this little sac is stretched out and the tissue holding it together is extremely weak. So at any moment, this sac could burst and you could bleed out in seconds. So some signs and symptoms of this are pallor, which is another word for paleness, presence of a murmur, pulse differences, paresthesia, decreased urinary output, and pooling. You want to watch this patient's blood pressure super, super close because at any moment with any strain or any type of anything, this sac can burst and they're going to bleed out and their blood pressure is just going to start dropping. So you want to keep a close eye on this pressure. This patient is definitely going to go get a CT scan and that's where we find the aortic aneurysm. But our goals of therapy is to slow the progression of the disease. How we do that is by modifying the risk factor. So a lot of times hypertension causes this aortic aneurysm. So we want to keep their blood pressure within very, very fine limits to prevent any rupture or hemorrhaging. Right, guys, that is the end of the cardiac emergency stay tuned for the next video in the series thank you guys for watching